yet or it we just haven't get to try it yet uh yeah it just unexplored and we just don't know what it is right so so it's a bit tricky because uh, a lot of time when we're trying to reflect i mean based on uh our experience or our space that we have we kind of think like oh what is my strength what is my passion what i think what i love uh about and so on and so forth and the thing is like we're operating with uh kind of like what we only see what we only know but there's so many stuff that we don't know and it's also good to know that there's stuff that we don't know so we can be aware of right and before we going back to that uh, i want to have a, a share a story so this is like an assumption that i had like uh in the first four or five years in isaac so i always operate like this so i always thought that i'm a generalist i don't like looking at the detail i hate detail <laughs> And, 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 and yeah, I hate detail and I'm not detail oriented at all because when I do stuff, I always miss out the detail when I write something, grammar issue and so many other stuff that is happening. And that's usually uh, the kind of mindset that I operate when I was MCP also. And anything that related to detail, I leave to my MCPP who's good at detail because I know I don't like it. I don't think I'm good at it also. And yeah, so let's say if there's a speech or a presentation that I have to do, I write down the script, then I ask, uh, what is it? Like my MCVP to, to, to look at it if there's any issue. <laughs> if there's some legal uh, stuff that we have to clarify, I always ask my MCVP to look at everything. And yeah, that is something that I have always thought is my weakness. So then one years ago, uh, I joined Mind Valley. And I joined for about two or three weeks and they opened a new position. Then I apply and I got it. So I start my second month with a new role. And I apply, I didn't really know uh, what I have to do. Uh, I didn't know what I have to do, for example, uh, for my role and stuff like that. So what happening is that uh, when I get to know the job, it's like my job is to do quality assurance. Meaning that I have to go through, let's say we're having a product launch. I have to go to each sales page, reading it word by word, the detail and stuff like that. And looking and checking if every button is working, there's no error. Checking all the email, whether it's correctly set up, no mistake, no button issue and look at the design and stuff like that. It's just like whole detail. And that moment I thought like, shit, like I didn't know what I signed up for. It is a lot of detail work and it is stuff that I'm not good at and I jumped into it like because I mean I applied for it and there's no other way out of it so <laughs> and it's how I get paid so what I do is just okay to jump into it and just do what I can so I just throw myself into it and just explore so I do that role and surprisingly it's just like I, 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 I one month through the role I happen to got a lot of recognition it kind of people telling you, like, shit, you're so detailed. And people texted me personally also like, oh, you're very detailed. And they just start labeling me as like laser eyes. <laughs> like I find kind of issue because it's like even the smallest, smallest, smallest issue. And the thing is like when uh, I started, it just this whole quality assurance and more like checking the detail and stuff like that, it's a kind of like an optional process. And three or four months afterward, the product marketing team, they can't start to make a decision that no product go live to customer without Johnny doing quality assurance. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. And now like in the company, I'm developing this kind of a brand. I, I developed that kind of brand in myself. If you want a detail, come to Johnny. And this is currently like, even I, I start tracking data, like how many issues that I report per month, right? or uh, like how many issues that I find when I look at the uh, quality assurance and stuff like that. And looking at the past month, like on average per week, I find 100 issue that is wrong inside the company. And I raise to them and raise to them. And the thing is like, it, it's, it's, the thing is like, it's more like preventing the issue, right? But if I, I mean, I, I don't know how much, but it's like, even if it's saved, even 1% of the company revenue, by some of those mistakes, it could save at least like $1 million, like 
to to all this. So now I just like have this thing inside me. I just like start questioning myself. Like, okay, I always thought. I mean, I left that Isaac thinking that I was very self-aware. I know what I'm doing. I know my strength. I know what I'm good at. And then I do this role, I start questioning myself. Like, okay, so what if everything I think about myself is totally wrong? Because this detail orientation thing has been always something that I saw as a weakness. But while I'm operating and working for my job now, that required this thing, and I do it, and it becomes a strength. Everyone see that uh, that is the unique contribution that I give uh, to the team and to the company. So that is a kind of like shocking moment for me and realization that uh, I don't know uh, what the hell I'm doing anymore. I don't know if I'm self-aware about myself anymore. So yeah, I, I start explore more about this. And things I realize is this is uh, from this guy Tom Chi I found around last year also when I joined the company. Uh, he was saying this that I uh, truly believe is that knowing is the enemy of learning. And this applied to either learning in school or maybe learning about ourselves. I think what I did well when I started the role is that if I come to the role with an assumption that I know myself, I know that I'm so bad at being detail-oriented, I wouldn't be able to be open to myself to learning how to do that and to know that it becomes a strength. So what I'm saying that self-awareness is good, but if we are not sure whether we're self-aware and we're praising ourselves that we're self-aware about this, that can cause a lot of limitation of our further growth. Another way of seeing from a Greek philosopher, Epictetus, he was saying that it is impossible to begin to learn that which one thing once already knows. So if you think that you already know that, you come to a perspective that, okay, this is how far I can go. This is the only thing I can do. Then we're not opening ourselves to learn anything anymore, right? Self-aware is pretty much a lifelong journey. There's no degree to that, to validate that how self-aware you are. I mean, you can be 60 years old, 70 years old, and still trying to learn more about yourself. And if we come with that conclusion that we already know ourselves, then there's a lot of limitation to that. So my conclusion around this is that self-aware is good, but the illusion of self-awareness can be dangerous meaning that we don't really know ourselves as much, but we assume that we know ourselves as much. And yeah, so this is a downside of the illusion of our self-knowledge. One is that we're limiting ourselves on what we can and cannot do. We're limiting ourselves for new opportunity for further growth and uh, exploration uh, about ourselves, right? Let's say, for example, in your LCB term, uh, you're coming into an assumption that oh, I'm very bad at public speaking. I'm not gonna be a good Farsi. And then every Farsi opportunity you try to avoid, right? So, so that's the thing. So if you're not opening yourself, if you come with that conclusion, self-awareness becomes a fixed mindset, which is not really the most ideal thing that you wanna have for yourself. And limiting yourself of what you can or cannot learn and limiting your own potential, what possible and what not possible, right? So, yeah. So focusing on strength, that is uh, stuff that we talk a lot. And especially this is uh, what the session is pretty much about. <laughs> but focus on the strength is good. But if you know this is really the strength. So I I'm raising this up. It's just to kind of like question our own assumption about what we know about ourselves. What if it's all wrong, right? So, yeah. So I want you to look at your, back at your strength now. So I can give you about five minutes as well. So maybe just ask it a bit more, right? Just to clarify our assumption about our strength and our weaknesses also, right? Because if you praise that this is a weakness, then you tend to avoid it and not do it. And you kind of limit your potential. Maybe in your case, might be similar to me thinking about like, uh, I'm not detail oriented as a weakness, but it could actually be a strength, right? So maybe ask yourself, as you look at each strength, 
uh, apply some Socratic questioning. Is there any evidence of this strength? So is there any data? Is there anything that can prove you have this strength or not, right? Or anything against it, right? Just think about it. They say, okay, I'm good at fast C, for example, because uh, there are many people actually rate me good in my feedback session, uh, feedback after the session, right? Or, but is there any evidence that against it? Yeah, there's also bad feedback, right? So it's just to kind of juggle all this positive and negative. Are you basing on fact or are you basing on feeling? And this is important also, right? Because for me, detail-oriented is not a fact, but it's a feeling because I hate being detail-oriented because it, it's just my own feeling, right? But it's not really a weakness. So your weakness can be your own, uh, kind of like a feeling that you have about it that you don't like to do it, but it doesn't mean that you, you're not good at it, right? Or you're not gonna be good at it. Uh, could it be an in, uh, inaccurate assumption? And uh, you look at all the evidence that you have. So I want you to look at your strength and weakness. And if you find any kind of like imbalanced stuff, then you can push it around, right? Okay. So I'm giving you five minutes now. So clarify what you have just written. I mean, you don't have to look at all the things that you wrote, but is there, is there anything you're feeling so doubtful about that require you to rethink about it, then think more critically about this on how you would see this. Is your assumption about what you think is a strength or is a weakness? Is it correct or no? If you're unsure, you can move it into the unknown side on the right as well. Not once have I felt weird or different around you. Honestly, I feel like I 
don't have to be ashamed of who I am anymore. You make me feel like One last minute. Cool. So now we can continue using the list. And this is something that uh, I want you to split into your strength, right? Or stuff that you wrote, wrote down also uh, on the, the weakness side or unknown side, right? So let's, let's identify as two main metrics that we can use for this. One is things that you're evidently good at meaning that you're confident that this is your strength like uh yeah you're, you're totally totally confident and you're really really sure that this is your strength right and another one is stuff that you're not good at or things that you don't know whether you're good at it or not right it's just unsure and another metric we use is that is this useful or not useful for your lcp term right so now I want you to split into, okay, is it useful? And also stuff that you're good at also, you can put it top left and you can follow for the others. And for the stuff that you're not good at, if it's not, yeah, you, you can just put it there also, whether it's useful or not on the right. So I'm giving you five more minutes on this. So from what you have written before, uh, you can maybe on your paper, just split it into four and just put everything you write and just categorize them. If you find yourself a funny person as a strength, and if you think that that could be a useful thing that you can contribute to your team, that can be on the top left as well. And you can also refer from the competences that is needed to do your role to define what's useful or not uh, on a professional level also. But useful is that, yeah, in a way you can contribute to your team or to best perform in your role, or maybe to just give some element to it.
Uh, we have about one more minute. All right, cool. Okay, so I just asked you to split what you think is weakness or uh, strength because the thing is like this. So it's just to look at uh, strength and weakness in a more objective way because there's some stuff that you're not good at, but it's actually very needed to be, I mean, to have, right? To at least just be kind of good at it, not like the super, super strength, right? Because there's some requirement that you have to do in a certain role. I'm not talking only in the LCP, but it can be anything in, in your life, right? So, so there's stuff that is worth looking to if it's not weakness. And also there are also some strength that may not be useful that you shouldn't be looking at it at all. So this is just to make it more objective, more, uh, how can I say, intentional on when you're playing your role uh, with any of your strength and weaknesses. So how to do around this? So uh, stuff that you wrote in, and this is not like a, I don't know, it's like a proven kind of framework or something. It's just something that I thought of, but it's just, if you're good at it and you're like, if you're good at it and also it's super, super useful in your LCP term, I mean, your LCP role, then that is, you have to prioritize that. If you're not good at it, but it's super useful, it's a required things that you have to do then that area you need to explore. So, I mean, you can juggle around like maybe in your day about at least 50% of uh, your effort should play with the priority uh, and, and explore at least like 20% to play and explore that certain quality that you kind of not good at or have no idea because that can actually can help you. And stuff that you're good at, uh, but not really useful in your term, uh, as, as LCP, then that is the things that you should be delegating to other people or just ignore it. And yeah, for the other part, just ignore. Let me explain how it works. So if you're super good at it and also it's useful, that is your niche. That is your uh, biggest quality uh, that you can contribute to your team because yeah, because you're good at it and also uh, it can make a lot of impact into what you're doing, right? So those are pretty much some of the stuff that is considered uh, the 20% of your quality that I can actually contribute about 80% of what you're doing. So kind of 20, 80 things. And that is the thing that you can play with confidence, so on and so forth, right? So yeah. So another one is uh, things that you, you're not good at, but it's super useful. So that is the thing that you need to put on a test, right? So for me, in my case, uh, not be being detail oriented is in this category. I always thought that I'm not a detail person, but uh, I approach this and just like, okay, let's explore it because I need this to be able to do my work, right? And in some way, uh, I got to realize that I'm actually pretty good at it, right? But in the beginning, I, I always have an assumption, a uh, fixed, my, fixed mindset around this that uh, it's not uh, my strength, right? So. Another thing is uh, in school, uh, I was not a good student and I hate reading so much. Reading was never my things. And in my MCP term, I hit the point that I got so stuck and I started to think like, okay, there's so many powerful leaders that they very successful and they still read, right? So I'm kind of like, okay, let me try to read. And before that, I read like one book a year, that amount. But in my MCB term, I kind of make that shift and just, okay, this is probably 
one of the most useful thing that I can do is to read, right? So I start reading. And in my MCB term, it turned out that like last year I read like a book or two and I become like, become able to read like 60 something book in that year when I was MCP. So it was something that I thought uh, is my weakness, but I explore around because I saw it's useful. So it become a strength, right? I'm not saying all of it can be like that, but some of it can, but you need to see that, okay, that is something that you need to explore with a childlike attitude. By childlike, it's just like, think of yourself like five years old again, right? And you can just do whatever you want. You're not having hidden uh, ho uh, belief that hold you back from doing it all and play it all out. It's not like, okay, I'm not good at uh, facilitating uh, so on and so forth. And it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna try and just try, right? If you're gonna put it on to a test, you need to play it all out. It's not just like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, just try to test it out, but to give it all out in that period of time, maybe a week or two weeks, or maybe a month uh, to test whether this is something you're good at or not, right? And focusing on creating identity, not the activity. So stuff that, uh, that helped me is that my goal was not to read 50 books a year, but my goal is to be a reader, right? So that can also help to actually push us through. And another concept around this is, it's called a dip. So usually when we're trying to explore something and we give up uh, is because when the dip happened, meaning that you start to meet challenges and stuff like that, we quit at that point. So when we quit at that point, we, have, we do not have enough learning to actually realize that, oh, I'm actually good at that, right? So let's say uh, for me being detail oriented, when I, when I do my job is that uh, I experienced that dip in the first two weeks and I have to stick with it, right? I, I have two choices. One is to stick with it and go forward to, real, to, to, to know whether it's, it's a weakness or it's a strength. Another one is that to tell my manager, okay, I cannot do this job. Uh, let's put me back to where I was. So that's the two choice. And the thing is like when dips happen, when it's get difficult and you quit at that point, then it's usually a bad quitting decision point. So because you just need to overcome that dip, then you can know uh, whether this is something you should, I mean, whether it's become a strength or not, right? You're going to transform in that point. So so yeah, it's, it's for example, like uh, before I used to think that uh, I'm very bad at reading. Why? Because I open a book for 10 minutes and I start to feel sleepy already, right? That is a dip and I give up on that point. But when in my MCB term is that I try things differently is to go beyond the dip. I start to read like 30 minutes or one hour straight. Then I start to like it and enjoy it. So that is the thing. So when you try it, be aware of the dip. Don't quit when it's difficult. Play full out until the end, depend on the time range that you actually give yourself to test whether it's a strength or a weakness. And stuff that you're good at, but it's not useful. Uh, this is pretty much some of the stuff that you should avoid because it's a possible distraction because the thing is like this, personally, we always have uh, our biases, what we want to do, what we like to do, right? Let's say for me, uh, when I was LCP, uh, I came kind of like a like OGV background and I also like to do marketing. So when I was LCP, I do design poster even for my Facebook page. I mean, my, my, my LC Facebook page back then, right? And that's not what an LCP should do because what I should do is to coach people to actually do that, not really do it myself. So I'm not really empowering people and just taking their job and avoid doing my own job, like manage my team and so on and so forth, right? Because we all have our own tendencies that okay, I like to do this more because it's my strength and because I love doing that. So you tend to do that, those things first and putting aside a job that is so important uh, that you don't like to do or you feel that you're not too good at it, right? So this is a possible distraction. It may you feel productive, but it's not efficient because you're not really doing your job because you're putting the time on the things that uh, other people can do or you can help them to do because uh, there's a certain people who have that responsibility in JD, right? So yeah, and as an LCP, it's not a healthy thing to keep doing that over and over because uh, in a way you're gonna make people more dependent on you. And yeah, 
And yeah, it, it, it's a, a great tendency to micromanage and take over as well. So in any of those cases, delegate and coach people to do it. So imagine like this. So in my case, like uh, I love to design uh, when it was LCP. What I could have done is to level up my skill on design. It's not to design myself, but to coach people to design. That is a different level that I could look at, right? So yeah, so avoid it. So, so yeah, so what I want you to do is uh, to have a breakout and to look at all of this that you just put it all together. Uh, is there any new realization, new things that you learn uh, about yourself after putting this? Is there anything or uh, stuff that, oh, do you think that is a weakness, but actually it's, uh, it's unexplored and it's also required for you to do? Is this something that you need to explore, right? So is there any realization and stuff like that uh, that you learn about yourself? So yeah, so Mayu uh, will help uh, giving a breakout for the room and you can start discussing in your group. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, thank you.
Mike, welcome back, guys. Let's wait a bit longer until everyone's back. All right, seems like most of us is back. All right, anyone want to share uh, from your insight or your sharing discussion, so on and so forth? Very silent. <laughs> Um, I think hi. Um, hi, Ajay. I'll hi. Uh, yeah, so I'll just share a little bit on what we just discussed just now in the breakout room. So I shared a bit on like some of um, the things that um, I have to prioritize, explore, delegate, and ignore. So um, the first, I guess, I'll go to the leftmost box. So I always thought like um, I mean, I guess based also on on some feedback that um. I have the ability to speak well. So um, basically I feel comfortable in public speaking spaces and therefore I always um, take opportunities to uh, facilitate or host events or basically like kind of leverage the strength to basically communicate goals and directions to my team as a LCT elect. Um, so um, basically like the things that I'm not good at and um, kind of useful and something I thought was really interesting just now that you mentioned um, about my weakness and like kind of turn around uh, the way we see it. it's like um, I always felt I'm not the most detail-oriented person so I think it's something that really really important to analyze and the KPIs on the things and some of the metrics that we need to measure so I think that is something that I will explore to be better at um, mm -hmm. and um, the things that I feel that is not useful uh, but I'm good at is probably um, like I think I like, I really like to, um, I'm good at slides, <laughs> creating mm -hmm. beautiful slides, I will, which even like, even, so there are times where I feel that even it's not particularly my job, then I'll, I'll always like um, uh, volunteer to do it. But then sometimes that like um, what you mentioned as well, like, you know, maybe it's better to to be a bit hands off and like delegate when it's not particularly mm -hmm. like my job to do it. And to ignore, um, I think that, um, I mean, it, this can also be something as a strength, but um, I do have a, have a, have a tendency to, to give dad jokes. Um, so it, it, so basically, like you know, usually after after I give those kind of jokes, like um, I'll I'll expect um, a more reaction from the audience, which I usually don't, or that. Um, so you know, it, it it can like you know, so some of the conversation that I have with uh, my teammates can be lengthened. So, you know, maybe something that I, I can like uh, minimize. So yeah, that's all for me. Um, yeah, so I'm Haja from Singapore. Sorry, I think I forgot to introduce myself. So yeah, that's it for me. All right, thank you. Uh, just to add up a bit from what you shared, I think it's good that we have a more broad mindset towards what is a weakness, but also useful, right? So that is something to explore. But I forgot to mention something that, yeah, you only, you should explore, but give it a try in a certain period of time, right? And if you find that, okay, repeatedly, this is something that uh, you're not going to go anywhere else, anywhere at, try to reach somewhere around foundation level. Or another way is delegation also, right? Be frank to your team that, okay, you're not good at this and I need support, right? Because in the end of the day, you're, got, you're not going to be perfect at everything. Uh, there's some always some shortcoming, but it's a learning process. It's fine. So it's it's good to be honest to the team as well, so they know where to support when we need. Thank you, Haja. All right. Any so any other person want to share? We can open the floor for two more people. Um, hi. <laughs> Hello. So hi, I'm Mia from the Philippines. My entity is called um, Miriam College. 
So I think what really was like an eye opener to me was um, the explore portion. Um, I feel like I've had, I've always been so focused that, oh God, these are the things that I have a hard time with. I have to push myself. I have to push myself. But I never gave in to the idea that it's something that I can do. Um, so like what I realized was, um, I realized that the things that I wa- I grew to love or grew to become good at before were actually the things I had a really hard time in. Like um, what is na- currently my niche market, which is um, the fact that um, I'm very passionate about mental health, empathy, um, studying psychology and all that was actually something that I became interested in was because I, I often had uh, problems of misunderstanding people or, or um, um, feeling like I wasn't good at taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. And when I pushed myself to become better, that's the only time that I did become good at what I do. And I guess it, it excites me to know that what was missing was, again, something that was within me um, the idea that I can become better at things as who I am and not pushing myself to be something I'm not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's me. All right. Thank you, Mia. That's a good, very, very good insight. Uh, any other sharing that you want to go? One last person. Hey, if no one else is going, I don't mind going. All right, let's go, Leo. <laughs> um, hey, guys, I'm Leo from Australia. Um, I, I saw your name popped up as Johnny earlier. Um, yeah, but I see on Zoom. I see on Zoom there's something else. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it's, that. It's my real name, Moni Patiri. So... <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I just go with Johnny in that case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, firstly, I think like it's awesome to see someone from Mind Valley. I'm a big fan, so uh, I reckon it would be an awesome place to work at as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, in our group breakout room, uh, me and Thomas actually were thinking that this would be an awesome framework to actually do our deliver a self awareness session to our team, uh, just because it's a uh, it's a way of looking at self awareness which is a little bit different from what I'm like what I'm used to. It this is this one is quite evidence based. It's and it really challenges some assumptions that we have ourselves, which we thought was pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. Never have ex- really experienced a self awareness se- session that dives so deeply into you know how do we discover like what's actually right about ourselves and you know is it actually right. <laughs> and so uh, my experience going through the session was writing a few things down initially and just thinking over time like wait is this actually real about myself <laughs> um so that was pretty cool as well yeah and that was me all right thank you leo thank you all right cool so yeah very very good insight uh, i'm glad that is your thoughts not not complicated in a way <laughs> and and again like uh this this is not like uh, this. This framework is just something that I thought of. It's not perfected, so if you are using it, feel free to adapt into your own way. Something that I just thought of uh, in the explore section uh, that might be useful, taking it forward, is that there are times that we know that we're not good at this and we have to do it, and we think that it is a a big elephant in a room that we don't want to work on it, right? So techniques that you can actually use to make it easier to start is to make it bite size, plan very, very small goal that is so easy to start, right? Let's say maybe for me, a habit uh, that I wanted to start when it was MCP is to start reading, right? I wouldn't want to plan like, okay, I want to read 50 books next year. I can set very small thing. I only need to read one page a day. To me, it's so easy that you, you, like, it's easy to start, right? Because when it's not a strength, it's kind of very hard to push it forward. So if you set small goal, easy to start, then you're setting yourself into a good first step uh, into making all this something big, right? So yeah. 
Yep, thank you. And just to wrap before we wrap up, just some thought as well. That pretty much what we think and throughout the session, what we put is what you know about yourself, but it is not, some of it might not be proven in certain data or stuff like that, or yeah, we, it's just what we think. And it is okay, right? But as LCP, as you go through the term, uh, try to ask other people, right? Because now uh, when we're thinking about ourselves, and, and that's the thing about personality tests, because when you're doing personality tests, you get the result and you think it's true. But the thing is you're not aware that when you're doing personality tests, you're also biased of how you want to be seen or how you are seeing yourself. So it's not the most objective way, right? So it's good to kind of kind of like step out our bubble and try to be more self-aware uh, in the circle that we're spending time with. So asking for your team, constantly asking for feedback. I know feedback sometimes can be painful, but just use it as an information one to learn how to be a better leader. And another one is to be a better self because uh, in the end of the day, you're not here just to do stuff for Isaac, but you want to leave Isaac becoming a better person, more self-aware person, right? So just use this opportunity because I mean, in Isaac, people are probably one of the kindest and easygoing people. So <laughs> use this space, right? You don't know what you're doing after Isaac. So just make good use of the people here. And whatever you're doing, uh, I mean, in any context of the world, is there's always uncertainty, right? We are going to a dark road and we don't know where it leads to. And, and yeah, we, and, and the thing is, we think that, okay, we must have everything figure out our strength and so on and so forth so that we can overcome this certainty, right? But it's not as that fixed because the world gonna keep changing and you might need to change yourself as well. What is your strength today might not be relevant tomorrow, right? You have to keep reinventing yourself. Uh, this guy, uh, you, you will know Harari, the writer of Sapiens, the book Sapien. So uh, he was saying something like, uh, in, because of the technology today is growing so fast, each of us might need to reinvent ourselves every 20 years at least. Like you need to shift your career because your job can't, I mean, the job that you're studying in school might not exist tomorrow. So you might need to keep adapting and learning and gaining new skills. Uh, and new strength. So in terms of self-awareness, it's not going to be a definite time that you know yourself. That is a lifelong journey that as long as you live, learn more about yourself because that kind of knowledge is probably the most useful thing that you can help to push yourself further. And that's why what I love about Isaac is all about self-reinvention, right? When I joined Isaac, I also don't know about myself. But after one experience to another, being a team leader, being LCVP, being LCP or whatsoever, each experience is I just go into certain challenges, right? Maybe for now, like your challenge is to do the stuff that is useful, but it's your weaknesses or stuff that you don't know or you don't enjoy, right? It's going through all this obstacle. And then by the end of the day, I mean, through midpoint or at some point of your LCP experience or even at the end, to keep reinventing yourself from the kind of knowledge or the kind of uh, insight that you get from that. So you can reinvent yourself to be better. And this is what I like, like rather just knowing the strength, uh, the, the quote from Bruce Lee that is very good is that empty your mind, be formless, be shapeless like water. If you put water into a cup, it become a, the cup. If you put water into the bottle, it become the bottle. If you put it into a teapot, become a teapot. Now you, now water can flow and it can crash. Be like water, my friend. So you're all gonna keep changing and the context of the world is gonna keep changing. So don't, don't be so fixated and be so fixed with about our knowledge about ourselves, but instead learn to adapt, right? And just approach a world in a more like childless, it, no, not childless, childlike, mindset, knowing that everything is possible, you can do it, uh, you just need to explore, just go all in, and, and you might explore something and learn something more about yourself. And closing off, the one last quote uh, from Lao Zhu, 
if I don't not wrong. So to know that you do not know is the best. To think you know when you do when you do not is a disease. Recognizing this disease it, as a disease is to be free of it. So what we used to think are uh, pretty much self-aware when it's an illusion of self-aware, not real self-awareness, what we know about ourselves, then that can be destructive, it can be a disease. So that is something to be careful of. So yes, hold the knowledge about yourself that, yeah, I know this is my strength, but be open to more possibility, right? Like maybe stuff can change. Maybe uh, you might bump into experiences that make you realize something else and just be open. So yeah, I don't know. It is so weird because <laughs> this session is about uh, focusing on your strength, but this is more like to kind of like challenge the assumption on strength. But I think it's good to challenge our assumption about our strength so we know exactly what is our strength so that we don't focus on that uh, what that is not true. Okay, so that's pretty much for uh, the lead session. Uh, we have like six minutes left. So if you have kind of questions, stuff you want to clarify, uh, we can use this space. So yeah, just feel free to unmute if you have any questions. I, I do have a question. If you go back to the four, the four box um, yeah. framework that you had, mm -hmm. I just want to ask about like, how do you determine how useful like quality or like a skill is? Mm, there's so many ways, like, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have the criteria for all of this, but what I can think of is one is that, uh, what are the certain, like you look at from the, the job scope, right? So from the job scope, what is required for you to do, right? And what are the competence, competences that is needed to do your role, right? I think AI, they also have this thing, right? Like certain level, I mean, certain skill that is needed to be LCP and stuff like that. That may be something to, to refer. Uh, another one is also to understand the context of your LC. So ask, talk and ask to your members or LCP, right? What type of LCP that is needed in this LC right now? What the kind of quality that, because the, the, the written JD stuff, yes, it's a general thing, but different LC have different reality. So that's why it's good to talk to our people and know what type of leader that they needed. So then we know this is something useful, right? So yeah, I, I think so, yeah. And, and, and the thing is just like this, I mean, it's also from the inside that you get and then you kind of think maybe there's stuff that people don't say it useful, but it could be useful, right? Let's say nobody say that they want uh, an LCP that is funny, but that can be useful. Maybe uh, from what you think is like, okay, maybe it can kind of light up the environment and make people positive and stuff like that, right? So it's dependent on judgment uh, and also, yeah, what is needed that uh, in, in the moment of the LC based on the context that it's dealing with. That's what I would say, yeah. I understand. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, man. Okay, one last question if you have. Um, I kind of wanted to ask about the dip that you explained in Explore. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I guess for you, um, I, how do you know when the dip, when it's a dip and when it's not like you're hitting a point where you finally realize, oh shit, I'm really not good at this. <laughs> like, mm. how do you show what, how do you know or characterize the dip? <laughs> Mm, it's just when you find it very difficult in general. Uh, uh, so what's happening is that uh, there's actually a person who wrote a book on this, uh, Seth Gordon. It's called The Dip also. That's where I got the concept from also. So he was saying that uh, if you want to learn very fast, uh, you should give up when it's easy and you should stick with it when it's hard. Because when it's easy, you're not gonna grow as much, right? That, that's his definition on, in terms of the dip. So that's why when the, the, the cliff go up, if you look at the left, that is, if you find it easy, you should quit, right? But the thing is like when you hit the dip, that is where you know, okay, you start to see, uh, how can I say, the, the limitation that you have. 
and you start to be aware of your limitation, then uh, you work on that journey, right? Because it's, it's similar with the uh, inner and outer journey also. You go to outer journey and there's a lot of challenges and you meet it and you feel difficult, you feel drained, you feel like you feel limited and stuff like that. And when that hard moment is experienced, that is where you, you kind of know uh, that you have the dip. So when you have the dip, then trying to kind of sit down and reflect on everything and trying to find a way to make it better. And if you are trying to do it and it's not working out, uh, after a certain period of time, then, then you can define. But, but usually if it's hard, you stay, then it could help you to be a better person. In general, like Isaac, for example, right? The longer I stay, the harder it is. And the long, I mean, the more that I learn. So, so yeah, that, that's what I would say. Uh, if you want to know more, I, I recommend to check out the book like written by Seth Godin or so. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yep, that's a wrap for the session. So if you have any further questions, feel free to reach me out uh, personally. So, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and hope it's useful uh, overall. Thank you so much and have a great day, a great year ahead. And yeah, in whatever you're doing, uh, you know, I say go outside, Isaac, thank you. <laughs> if you're in luck, yeah, all the best. All right, bye-bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnny. Okay, um, for everyone, as that we're gonna have a checkout right now uh, in this link. However, uh, there is a bit of delay for other session. So I think you can take like five minute break, but I would not suggest you to leave the chat, uh,